so let's start with what's your name? John Davis. And recall Adler. Yeah. Okay, so you want to tell me, um, how, have you been down here before, or is this like first no, day? No, um, not since Occupy Wall Street, so I've, I've taken a break for that long, and just with the violence in the streets now and uh, the tension, I felt I need to come out here and show you know the right way to protest, uh, spread the word to recall Adler. Of course, they talk about defunding the police, but City Hall actually has billions set aside in funds. I used to do that as a side project, doing public information requests, looking at the budgets, and so I know for a fact that City Hall has hundreds of millions of dollars they can put towards mental health systems. They just don't do it. So, um, Austin City Council did defund the police by, not defund, but uh, lower the funding by, I think it's a hundred. Hundred million is what I believe. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think of that? Well, it's kind of a accounting game. And I personally have saw the budgets through the comprehensive annual financial report of APD and City City Hall or Austin's budget. And they have hundreds of millions of dollars in other budgets that they don't talk about in the public. APD, out of the hundred million, every year has about two or three hundred million that is unused and they shuffle it over to the reserve budget. So now they have close to a billion dollars that is at their uh, ready to be used. And it's all a politic trick to make so, people think they're actually doing something. Right. Really, they're just moving. I wondered about that. City Hall is an example. I found out Austin Energy years back when they wanted to raise rates. I did the same thing. Comprehensive annual financial report. Found out they had 300 million set in a rate stabilization fund, which the name of that says you don't raise rates because you have this 300 million. But Austin City Hall tried to raise it 20 percent. And then I, I went here, gave them the facts. Uh, there was a lot of citizens that came out, and we made the change. And hopefully now we can do the same thing again. The city Hall stop them from continuing to be funded. Right. All right. So tell me about your brother again. I'm sorry. Oh no, you're fine. So uh, I was born into an Air Force family. My dad was uh, basically a white hippie from the Ozarks, but uh, was in love with all cultures. So he joined the Air Force. I met my mother in the Philippines. And uh, he adopted my brother, who's half African American and Filipino, as his own. So being raised in an Air Force environment, and before moving to Austin, living in uh, Crete, Greece, which was like an island paradise, we were beach kids, taught to respect authority in your country. We moved here to the U.S. and got trapped into this fake culture, this gangster culture that they like to push, where people uh, wanting to act like criminality is the right way to live and they pay for it by going to the prison systems. So the media, the prison systems all profit off of that by having the young youth fall into that trap. And my own brother served 12 years because of it. And thank God he broke the conditioning and it took 12, you know, several years to do it. But now he's here, he understands uh, that we got stuck in it. And the youth today, I can see it being even worse. It's like more of a, don't have a respect for authority. They don't have that family structure kind of telling them to respect people. So that's what we're seeing now on the streets. We definitely cannot fund the police because our communities of color really need that police protection. So to, to, to get information through the comprehensive annual financial reports, it's a lot easier nowadays. You can basically go to that city entity or government entity and they have an office that provides that as a soft copy. You can get it over your phone. Back in my days, 20 years ago when I first started, I used to have to go to the office. They'd bring in big old boxes of paperwork, rifle through it. They used to charge me per page. But now it's so much easier, but people aren't aware that that option is there. What's the cost like now, or is it just there? Wow, just nice. In fact, I did it for the city of Austin uh, when this whole thing came up. Come to find out they still have hundreds of millions of dollars set aside and, and reserve budgets that they won't talk about. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Because I get letters, emails all the time from city councilmen telling me, look, but we just defunded them by this much money. Aren't you happy? And I'm yeah. like, you know what? It's For me, it's a double-edged sword. So yeah. I can't say I'm happy or unhappy. Right. But that's a funny number. 
Yeah, and they have million. so much money, and for the last 10, 15 years, they should have been building the institutions, mental right. health hospitals for the homeless to get them free medication. They keep the uh, opposite. assistance. We've got the infrastructure. We've got the real estate. Yes. But in my honest opinion, I think that there's criminality going on there. Oh, yeah. And that's why Adler didn't want a full audit of all the finances because he has hundreds of millions of dollars tied into real estate. In his construction company. Yeah, it, it's Wasn't that funny? Question. Did you find it interesting that at the beginning of lockdown, the one business that could continue, besides groceries, you know, absolute necessities, was construction. When our mayor owns a construction company. Oh, yeah. Was that interesting to you? Yes. yes. Uh, no, it wasn't just me. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, the conflicts of inf interest go unpunished, so that's why they flaunt it now. But until the citizens actually speak up and use the three minutes the council gives you or come out here, you know, hold a sign out for a few hours and bring it to people's attention, they think there's nothing they can do about it. And I can say personally, one person, myself, has made an influence for a lot of issues by going to that city hall, by going to the mayor's office, setting an appointment, having facts when you talk to them, have numbers, pull from their own website, and they actually try to argue that with Austin Energy. Where did you get those numbers? It's from your website. You get your own numbers. They don't know. <laughs> no. Sad. Yeah, they just get together to have a little, you know. Yeah, and, and just in this day and age, we can't have it. People are too savvy, and it's not like before where you had to go to the library to get information or communication. Now or yeah, come to city phone. hall. Do you really think that people are that savvy, or are are do you just hang out with intelligent people that like looking um, this stuff okay, up? Okay, no, I should have reworded that. So. The general population is not that savvy, but they have the ability to be. But they've got the focus twisted by that media industrial complex right. to be distracted from real issues. And it's sad that, uh, as an example, what I mentioned before about the hip hop community, which I, I listened to that music, mm -hmm. I shared something on Facebook about WAP, which is a very nasty video with Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. I know what that's about. And, and they're doing nasty things, and it's actually got a lot of pedophile imagery. I study that. And, and videos and, and as a director there's so a lot of it <laughs> I posted that saying is this what you want for the minority community the black and Latinas to have them as role models and I have two daughters and I didn't think so but the vitriol coming back was that why are you hating on them trying to make their money are you racist because you're talking down I'm like you must not see my skin color because you know, there's no way I'm racist <laughs> it's dad the yeah I... that someone posts something like myself or yourself and they don't agree with your train of thought. They won't even read the article, won't read the statement, won't watch the video. They just comment against you without even any facts behind it. Well, yeah. People need to slow down and, and read behind the lines and look behind the curtain. And too much nowadays, they just believe what someone posted without, like you said, even reading their own article. And sometimes I like to call them out, but uh, the most time I I'll do. just ignore it. Or what I'll do is post the same video that they posted, but with my perspective, which yes. is a little more based on fact. Right. Instead of emotion. I mean, we're emotional people, but you, you got to check I, it sometimes. I think we get more emotional every day this, this yeah. lunacy continues. Yeah. I feel like I woke up in the twilight zone sometimes. I, I, I do too. I mean, I was raised that people of authority, when they told you things, you listened, you gave them respect. And I honestly have gotten out of so many tickets by saying, sir, yes, sir, I apologize, I was speeding a little bit, and they just let me go on my way and don't give me any problem. Yeah. But now it's like the youth think it's cool to go against authority, and what they don't realize, without authority, you have anarchy, and then everyone's in risk. See, I'm, I'm, I'm not on either side of that issue because I can see pluses and minuses on both sides. Um, I think we have far too many police, in fact. Oh, yeah. I think they get far too much money and the munitions they have are far too militaristic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when someone has an argument and you have 12 cops showing up, oh, yeah. what the hell? Yeah, yeah. Now, I have a personal example in California. I was test driving a Mustang convertible. And it happened to be the salesman was black, my friend was Hispanic, 
And so as we're going to the, the dealership, four cops surrounding us, they pulled me over, had the guns drawn, and, you know, mm. I keep my hands on the wheel, and they thought it was stolen. Right. I'm guessing because we were brown skin. Well, yeah. It's definitely a scary situation. And luckily, the salesman had his tag, and we got out of that. But you, you are right. There's too many police, not enough mental health helpers, uh, not enough to focus on the youth. But you got to really catch them young, between eight and maybe 14. Yeah, I agree. To really change their thought and their, their frame of mind. But even one really bad incident yeah. can change things for yeah. kids. It's it's terrible. Yeah, and I have a family that... Uh, and this officers. is destroying our poor kids. I mean, my kids are older, about to have kids. Yeah, um, yeah it's, I still have hope that slowly we can go back to pushing the ship the other way. We don't want to crash it on the rocks, but we can't point it out to sea. Do you have any opinion about when, if, how this might get better? It's, it's getting better because the people are, are not listening anymore to the fake science they push out. And what Adler continues to change the goalpost from hospitalizations now down to the number of Testing. cases. Testing. And you know every case is a test. Oh yeah. If you yeah. test them, it's a case. So. And some people get tested five times. That means five right. cases. I personally got tested twice. Oh my gosh! So you're already two oh. cases. But I, I was fortunate. The first time was positive. Second time was negative. I could go back to work. But what Adler, being super wealthy, doesn't understand that the working class are mostly affected. The ones that didn't get the government assistance, the right. ones that may not qualify for unemployment or get it fast enough, and I know a lot of them personally, can barely pay their bills. They're almost homeless. But Adler's sitting up living in the W, mm. banking off of our city. He's living in the city. W, really? He has a $4 million. Hey, you go see him. $4 million. That's my next spot is going to be at the W. Uh, probably in a few weeks, I'm going to find a, a public space right in front of the W. Good. <laughs> hotel and then uh, hold my sign up for a bit. Yeah. Uh, so, do you think there's a, a date we should look for? Or a, a, a ish? For a date-ish? Yeah. Uh, that may be next year, but uh, you're slowly going to open up. Like last night, I went to the Domain and heard my friend Casaneda Project, a really great oh, band, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack and Gingers. And it was people enjoying themselves. They were distanced. They had the mask when they got up and down from the tables, as ridiculous. if it really helps. But psychologically, for yeah, the I bar know. owners, that allowed them to open up. They made a good revenue. Well, it's not the bar owners. It's oh. a couple of places sure. that could afford to new license. Have well, yeah, essentially. Um, this is Austin. That's what we're about. Music capital of the oh, world. Yeah. And what? I heard a sad thing last night that the Houston venues are paying double what Austin is. And Austin just passed a bill recently giving a lot of money supposedly to musicians. So how is it that they're not seeing that money? And I would like to uh, rob my budget compared to the revenue they were making when the uh, before you had the homeless invasion. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And before yeah. you shut down 6th Street. Yeah, shutting down 6th Street. Just, just, Do you, have you been to 6th Street much? I, I've, I used to go once a month for the last 20 years. Me and no, I mean, I mean since the lunacy. Sad. Now, I, I've driven by there, but I can't. Until it's open back I, up. I go. It just, it's too frustrating. I'll, I go because I just want to show people. I want people to get mad. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and, and I need to go there again. It's been several months. I was frustrated when I saw it then. There hasn't been a, 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 music, a song played since um, the 26th of June. All that we went through, through all, all these decades, uh -huh. to shut down uh -huh. the life and blood of a city like that. I moved to Austin um, initially in 1977. Okay. I moved to Texas in 76. So 77 I came to Austin and what we're seeing right now is what it used to look like, but there was music <laughs> behind all the right. drug addicts and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least you could go enjoy something. Yeah. Um, now there's no music behind it. Like, yeah. you know, there are guys, kind of greasy looking guys standing there going, come on in, come right. on in, and the entry is free. It hurts the homeless because I used to give money a lot of other officers. It does. That's the first, that's the first people did. I thought about. Oh. So 
you haven't been down to any of the protests? Because I, um, I shoot them a lot. No, the, I've been to a few of the... My wife won't let me go to the BLM protests. But oh, you should. It's not dangerous. No, she was a little afraid, especially if I was wearing Trump gear. I've been there. Yeah, you know. Uh, I've been like there, I, and they say shit to me, and I'm like, hmm, whatever, kids. don't assault me. I don't mind talking. No, and there's never been any assault. that's what I told her. Never. I think the media hypes it up. Like I'm 60, movie. almost 62 years old. Yeah. I come down here by myself. Yeah. I have shot BLM protests. Yeah. Uh, actually, the only assaulting that was ever done to me was by cops. Oh, yeah. On horrible. May 30th, I was attacked three times by cops. Sheesh. Yeah, no. That, so, yeah. Uh, and BLM, they don't particularly love me. They hate yeah. that I won't wear a mask. They moan and bitch about that. Yeah. And I tell them to shut the fuck up. You don't know yeah, me. Shut the fuck up. Most narrative. <laughs> Seriously, it's stupid. I want to wear a mask because I'm not dumb. <laughs> I want to breathe it right. Talk about I can't breathe. Yeah, yeah seriously. When they used to, they're screaming, yeah. I can't breathe. I'm like, take off the fucking mask. Yeah, and the way I really got started. So, All right, like, hold on. Let me let me turn you back on.